This is Steve Wright for YUV Soft with a tutorial on the usage of depth propagation. Depth propagation is part of the 2D to 3D suite and is a powerful tool for minimizing the amount of manual rotoscoping required for stereo conversion. Depth propagation takes rotos for a few key frames and propagates them over the length of the entire shot. The main role of depth propagation is to automatically create depth maps for background regions. It's very successful for complex regions and even objects that change their depth. However, if the motion of foreground objects is not too fast and some rotos are prepared, then it can be highly successful on foreground objects as well. The artist tunes the parameters of the depth propagation node to maximize its success over each shot. It also provides the ability to correct propagation results plus easy access for adding more keyframes only and exactly where they're needed. The Depth Propagation node offers three options for the direction of processing, forward, backward, and bidirectional. Here, we'll compare the results of each direction option. We're going to use as our example this one interval right here that has these two key frames, one on frame 8 and another one on frame 35. An interval is the section of the timeline between two key frames. We'll start with default settings in Depth Prop 8 and see what we get. The default settings are Direction Forward, Correction No, Thick Borders No. If we look at a depth propagated frame here at 22, we can see we have some issues. The light pole here is a little thin and we have some depth leakage. Leakage is the foreground depth map smearing over the background. Now let's see what happens if we tune some of our parameters. We'll open up Depth Prop 6, which has forward processing and correction and thick borders enabled. And we'll take a look at that. Here's our direction forward, correction yes, and thick borders yes. And if we compare the default to depth prop 6, we can see we have noticeable improvements on the thickness of the pole here and back there, okay, and nicer edges, less depth leakage. Now in depth prop 7, we've simply changed the direction to backward. I'll hook up my viewer node to that, and we can compare that to the default. So the default and direction backward. Again, correction is yes and thick borders are yes. Now the backward direction requires a keyframe at the end of the interval because it's going to calculate backwards from there. Whereas the forward direction requires a keyframe at the beginning of the interval because it's going to calculate forward. While each of those directions only requires one depth map keyframe, you must set two keyframes in order for the start button to wake up. Otherwise it'll be ghosted. Forward propagation usually works best for objects leaving frame, and backward propagation usually gives best results for objects entering the frame. Our last example here in Depth Prop 5 is bidirectional processing. Here the direction is set for bidirectional, and again it has the same correction and thick borders enabled. If we compare the results of the bidirectional processing to the default, which is only forward, you can see there's a lot less depth leakage. However, Bidirectional processing does require a depth map keyframe at the beginning and the end of the interval. Because it's going to process in both directions, it needs a reference at each end. Bidirectional processing will give you your best results, and you'll have longer intervals between the keyframes, which means you can have fewer keyframes. However, it is slower processing. Here we'll take a look at how adding keyframes improves the depth propagation process. The bottom line is, the more information you give it, the better job it does. The YUV Soft workflow is specifically designed to allow you to put in just enough work necessary to achieve the desired quality. We'll start with this depth propagation node that has three key frames. Here, there, and there. Looks pretty good. However, if we were to go to an in-between frame, like say 77, we would see we had some serious depth leakage issues. When you have depth leaks from the foreground objects to the background after depth propagation, the solution is to add more key frames. You can even start with a propagated frame, correct it with the universal depth brush, and then use that as a new key frame. No need to start from scratch. Now let's see what happens when we increase the number of key frames. I'll open up depth prop 9, and two more key frames have popped in. Let's compare the results. Here is the five keyframes 
And here's the three key frames. Big improvement. If you still don't achieve the desired level of quality with the addition of key frames, you can always use rotoscoping for troublesome objects. Keep in mind that an object must appear in two or more key frames for successful depth propagation, so that will help you to decide where to place your key frames. Let's see what happens when we use seven key frames with this depth propagation node. We've added another key frame here, so frame 77 is now very close to two key frames. Let's compare the results of the seven key frames to the five key frames. Seven, five, seven, five. So the seven key frames have dramatically reduced the depth leakage yet again compared to the five key frames. Depth maps for foreground and background regions can be generated separately, then merged using a compositing program such as After Effects or Nuke. So for example, the background depth map might be generated without any rotors at all using the depth propagation node correcting a few key frames with the brush tool. Then the foreground depth map is generated using a few rotos as key frames, then merged with the background depth map. Here you can see the dramatic improvement when foreground rotos for the lamp and the car were used to composite a separately processed foreground depth map over the original background depth map. If the depth map of an object changes significantly during the scene, depth propagation might deliver incorrect depth values or noticeable depth drops in the middle of an interval. Use the correction option to address this, whether doing unidirectional or bidirectional processing, remembering that the correction option requires depth map keyframes at both ends of an interval. Here you can see the improvement in the propagated depth map for this traveling car with correction enabled compared to disabled. There are several things you can do to prepare your clips for even better depth propagation results. I'll be showing them in Nuke, but you can do the same operations in After Effects. The first tip is to downscale your images. You can make a half-res version and you'll get much faster depth propagation and much easier roto with a surprisingly little amount of degradation to your depth maps. Once the low-res depth maps are rendered, you can then up-res them with the Depth Upscale tool here. This is not just a simple upscale algorithm. It has special edge sharpness preservation built into it. Next, noise reduction. Clips with video noise or film grain result in less accurate edges. So the cleaner your plates, the cleaner the depth maps. And lastly, increase the contrast. Increasing the contrast will give you stronger edge boundaries and that will reduce the depth leakage. Making the right choices for processing direction, the number and placement of key frames, plus preparation of your source clips will help you to create the most accurate depth maps with the least possible amount of work.